Hello everybody, I'm Alfred and you're listening to Alfred's Bible Club podcast. I'd like us to open our Bible to the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 2. I read, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concession. Now, the first part, beware of dogs. I'm sure you've seen that on people's gates and before you enter some people's property you know it's more common in more co- in some countries than some others you know beware of dogs and um, what is it warning of is it warning of dogs that are out there on the streets or dogs inside the compound it's warning about dogs that are inside the house dogs that are inside the compound you know in a church there are people that are going to be inside the compound that are inside the church inside among us you know they move among us but they are not one of us judas is you know there are going to be people like that you know people like bad jesus you know um people who are with us but are not of us they are sure to be people like that you know so the church has to be prepared and God itself regarding such situations. Now, the Alfred's Bible Club is structured differently. You know, it's structured in a completely different manner, kind of like a giant gang with little clicks underneath, and you can start your own click, but it's all under the same umbrella. So it's like um, it's a organization that's when you join you go through a discipleship program then you have the official you know um authorization to start your own branch or start your own group underneath the alfred bible club umbrella so it's very structured differently and it's structured to keep it in small groups of stuff now keep in mind that you don't have to complete the first time discipleship you know program before you start your own group it's structured that way because in the bible a lot of people started winning souls immediately you know and that is important you testify i mean look at the woman that jesus met at the well she started evangelizing that was basically the first evangelist you know she went and she started telling people about Jesus. Come and meet. I've, I've met the man who told me everything about my life. You know, it, you know, bringing them. Ah, is this the Messiah? Is the Messiah? You know, going out and bringing all those people. She evangelized right away. There are a lot of people in the scriptures who did that, and it's advisable to do that. But note that. You are still a baby Christian, so there are a lot of problems that you could encounter, so you have to do it wisely. There are problems that one could encounter that one is not ready for because that is still a baby Christian, you know. But however, once you have heard the good news, you should start spreading it. But you also have to grow, and it's very important that you grow. And in this modern day and time, I noticed there are some people like a celebrity, for example, who recently gives their life to Christ and then they start going out and telling people now they are in a huge position where they are in the public eye and they are asked difficult questions that they are too new in the faith to know how to answer or to know the accurate answer so they often run into trouble if let's say that um, you are living in the world let's say for example a famous only fans girl for example known online she has millions of followers she gives her life to Christ Rather than her going from podcast to podcast to talk about Christianity, which she just became a Christian and doesn't know a lot about because they are going to ask her a lot of questions and they are going to be those who are sent by the devil to bring her back to her old life or to, you know, who want to take shots at Christianity. And there are are certain questions that may seem difficult to a new believer, but the answers are actually quite simple. But because you don't know them, you know, that could be something that could be used to discourage you in your faith. So be wise. You already have a platform of millions of followers. You don't have to go around to, from podcast to podcast or be answering questions from the world. Just tell your story, tell your s- testimony, and let people see you on your journey. You know, because there are those who 
like I, I can think of a huge YouTube c content creator who decided to make his life, you know, he gets serious with his life with Christ, and he decided to abandon his channel and take a break. And you know, there are some that will go into the business of ah, that was in the world. I want to build a new following posting Christian content. Then you are going to be talking to a new market and not reaching the, the market and the demographic that you already have, you know, um, God wants you to reach because you, they already look up to you and they are in the world. So that your channel, start posting Christian content and then you slowly take away, you know, gradually all the old, you know, content. But start posting on that channel and tell them your journey. Even though you don't know everything about Christianity, you can't answer every question. Focus on where you are and what you have learned. This is my testimony. This is what God did for me. You know, I may not know everything about Christianity. I may not know the answers to all the difficult questions. But this is what Jesus did for me. You know, be like that guy who was like, you know, I don't know these things that you Pharisees and, and Sadducees are saying. All I know is that I was blind but now I can see because of Jesus. So all this one that you are accusing Jesus did this and just that is your cup of tea. All I know is that I was blind. Now I can see. You know, be like that. Tell your testimony. And then the new things you learn in the faith as you learn and grow. Because keep in mind, a lot of times the world and the nations and the populace is changed. It's changed by people who do not listen to the opposing voices, but you just do their thing. Sometimes we Christians, we waste our time, time to explain to every individual or allow, you know, every single individual ask us questions and then we defend and then we are moving so slow. But most people in the world that cause a lot of change, they don't bother to explain themselves. They don't do their own thing. Look at the UN. Did the UN need your permission to start the UN? Did the World Economic Forum need your permission to start the World Economic Forum? But should they not require your permission? This is an organization that influences the economics of the banking system and of presidents. This, this is an organization that invites presidents, world leaders, and gives them advice and decides, tells them, this is where I think you should go, what direction. You know, it, it's, it's an in-your-face cult for global domination and rule that is in your face you know all the g8 summit and all of that what democratic rights do the citizens of those individual nations have over such decisions when they have agreed oh you france you have to behave like this oh you president of nigeria you have to do this those people do the president do it without consulting the citizens or even the senate so, what happens with democracy? But the people who found this organization, they don't bother about giving explanations. They don't do their thing. And they end up making a lot of progress in their own agenda, which is often an ungodly agenda. Look at the LGBTQ movement. Once upon a time, in America, if you say that you were lesbian or gay, you were put in a mental asylum in America. You know, I believe in the 30s and 20s. You know, probably 20s and earlier on, it was around the 30s that, you know, the law changed. But that was the standard. You say that uh, somebody is lesbian or somebody is gay, they put that person in a mental asylum. How did things change from there to now here? Where if you do not approve of somebody being gay, you are the one that will pay all kinds of fines and taxes and, you know, could probably end up in prison. You know, there are people who. Um, have lost custody of their children because their child wanted to sex transition, you know, and the parents said no, you know, or in some case, the father will say no, but the mother says yes. And then there's, in addition to um, cases where they are divorced, the, both parents are divorced, the father says no, the mother says yes. And then because of that, especially if it's in California, they give custody of the child full custody of the child to the mother these are happened on several cases that have become high profile you know that are known cases you know so and even elon Musk was tweeting and talking about one of such cases you know so th this is um 
These are decisions that people make and impose on everybody without asking for your permission. So we as Christians, we should learn how to do that too. We don't need people's permission to preach the gospel. We don't need people's permission to obey the Bible. We don't need to start explaining to people that ah, the Bible says this, this, this. That is why I am obeying it. You know, and when they come with their ah, but it doesn't make sense or blah 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 and ah, this and that. We don't need to explain to them. Do they explain to us why they do the nonsense that they do? I mean, we have people waking up one morning and saying that there are as many genders as you want want there to be. Is that not mental illness? But they don't care about our common sense. They don't care about our opinion. They go ahead and they want to push and um, they are going forward to push all kinds of laws to make it so that if we oppose them, as a matter of fact, if we see a man that says he's a woman and we call him a man, we could end up going in prison, going to prison. That is the world that they built. They did not ask for our permission. So why do we need the world's permission? We need to be wise. So stop listening to the opinions of the world on how you should practice Christianity. And, you know, when they come with, um, why are you a Christian? Why did you become a Christian? You know, and they come with so-called hard questions. You know, you don't owe them an explanation. They certainly don't give you any explanation for what they do. So, if you just give your life to Christ, preach the gospel, you know, don't worry about those who will be trying to discourage you, you know, in the world. And don't worry about those that are quote-unquote in the house who will be saying, ah, you are not good enough. You know, like um, there's a popular um, female, you know, OnlyFans content creator, you know, that's, um, um, you know, did a one eighty, and you know wants to walk, you know, in the Christian path, and you know, or is now pushing that co um, content, you know, and is now walking in that direction, and they are like, oh, she's a fake Christian, she's not a real Christian. Oh, you were this, you were that. Now you want to represent Christ, and you know, you're a fake Christian. And these are people. Most of the people are people who say they're Christians. Those are the dogs that the Bible talks about. Beware of dogs. So know that you are going to have this in the house of God. You are going to have this in the church. Beware of dogs. They are going to be Judas's. They are going to be people who are under the name Christian. But are not Christian. They are working with us. But they are not of us. You know. So you have to um, know that. And don't let them deter you. Your mind should be focused on Christ. And one other thing that people need to understand about churches, and it should be obvious, but people don't take it into account, you know, is the fact that the doors of a church are open. In other words, anybody can enter. A thief can enter. A serial killer can enter. A rapist can enter. Anybody can enter. And that is why, that is actually how the church is built, for these people to come and change. So you should be cautious. I don't understand, you know, people like to say, oh, they are hypocrites in the church. Why should they not be hypocrites in the church? They shouldn't only be hypocrites. They should be serial killers. They should be mass murderers. They should be kidnappers. If a church does not attract these people, how are these people going to change? How is the community going to change? Such people are supposed to be in the church. And then when they receive the word of God, you know, it is, it is not even on the pastor for them to change. It is on them. The pastor's job is to give them the truth. It is on them to change. You know, but you have to be cautious about this because some people, you know, seem to be, um, they, they, they run around with, with the, the foolishness of, I don't like the church. Look at the kind of people that are there. Those kinds of people and worse are supposed to be in the church. That is where they are supposed to be. And keep in mind also, it is just like, you know, someone once said about psychiatrists in the world that a lot of psychiatrists, the reason they are psychiatrists is because they were trying to find out more and solve a problem with themselves. They themselves have some serious issues and struggle in certain areas and they are trying to find out more of how they can solve it. That is why, you know, in most cases they become psychiatrists and psychologists and, you know, um, therapists. You know, and now they are giving people advice. 
you know but they themselves what brought them there is that they have serious issues in in certain areas and those issues may probably still be there because you know worldly advice really doesn't change anything a lot of the time you know and in the same way in church as you can see that the doors are open as it should be and all kinds of people murderers killers rapists people with all kinds of distance you know are, are brought into the church that means that there are people who will eventually become leaders who used to have issues or may still have issues just like there are therapists that have serious issues that is why they even became therapists they were studying the problem that they themselves are struggling with and now they have they have phds and degrees in therapy and they are now giving people advice on that problem that they haven't fully solved on themselves the same way since the doors of a church are open there are people who will eventually become leaders who were killers um rapists you know they have all kinds of sexual perversions we don't know to what degree those perversions have completely gotten out of them or whether it is still you know a little bit of it is left or if all of it is left so you have to be cautious and beware of dogs in that scenario also the bible is warning us beware of dogs so there are going to be people like that so it should not come as a surprise and people should not be off their guard and you, you say ah this person is a devout christian he's always coming to church so you can leave your child with that person no understand that the doors of a church are open so that person you may be leaving your child with could be somebody that they were struggling with sexual immorality and you know pedophilic feelings or whatever and that is actually one of the things that brought them to church so that they, they, those things can be knocked out of them those things can be taken out of them they wanted to be set free from those things but you don't know to what degree they have been set free or whether they have not fully and they are still struggling with it and then you give your child to them to take care of them you know you just leave your child around them you know later we now start hearing report of this clergy man molest molested this child or that child keep in mind this, this is a reality and understand that some people um, can be tempted in some things and cannot be tempted in some things you know people have different weakness there are some people who their own weakness is um, women you know uh, but perhaps they have never drank alcohol is not their weakness so you cannot tempt them with alcohol they cannot be tempted to drink alcohol but their own weakness is women and there are some people who their own weakness is alcohol it is not women you know anywhere you know um they see alcohol they want to drink you know every time they they cannot stand on their own you know so the the weakness and the struggles of different people are different and what tempts them is different so be cautious of distance and you are going to find this in a church because the doors are open and the doors should be open so it should not come as a surprise to you and all this nonsense about scandal oh this church has a scandal this church has a scandal when you understand what i'm saying you won't be looking at it and saying ah why um oh this church has a scandal this church has a scandal you understand that the doors of a church are open and it is for all kinds of people to get in so why wouldn't all these kinds of people be in you know why wouldn't there be dogs in the church why wouldn't there be wolves in the church a church that doesn't have dogs or wolves the only way for a church to not have dogs or wolves is for it not to be a church you know the, it means that they close the doors so it's not a church you happen you got perfect people into a building you know or into a group and then close the door and say no more members or you you, you put all kinds of restrictions before people can get in to make sure that they are purified and perfect before they get in that is the only way for a church to have no dogs or wolves and if you do that that is not a church you have now done something else that has nothing to do with what jesus told us to do you are not reaching out you are getting perfect people that already have jesus that don't need anything that you can clearly offer them in church because you, they are already fully perfect and improved and don't need any uh, any more help so why are you even bothering so if there's any church where there are no dogs or wolves 
that is it you know it is not a church so be conscious of this situation there has to be dogs and wolves it's not like um you are hoping there will be but the way all churches are set up even um you know alfred's bible club alfred bible club is set up differently there will be less dogs and wolves because you yourself can start your own group and it's structured that way so you do not meet larger groups so let's say that you are listening to me online and you want to join alfred's bible club you just go through our online discipleship program uh, online like a discipleship course bible course and then you start your group you you know you meet in your house or you can meet in you know a restaurant or anywhere you know it, it's made up of your friends people that you know and when you hit the number 12 when you win souls and hit that number 12 you break off again you know and another group is formed so into groups of 12 12 12 you know so Sometimes there may be a range of 12 to 15, be depending on how close-knit it is, but that is how it is. And you hold Bible studies and Bible fellowships together. But in open places, in public places, no buying of buildings, no need for a church building. You have to infiltrate and to fellowship around with the people and to win people. You know, so you have meetings in parks, in public places, everywhere. You know, even in your office. You know, during the break period, you tell your um, co-workers, you know, during during the break, you know, we are, we are having a little um, get together. So you invite uh, folks within your office during the break period, not office hours, during the break period, in between office hours. You know, you guys gather with your meal, you discuss some Bible verses, you know, you have a, a little Alfred Bible club there, you know, it could take just five minutes of your time or 10 minutes of your time you know and that's how you guys could do and of course you know there are other things involved you know that go outside of it but in that kind of situation it's so close-knit that everybody knows everybody within the small group so it is the lesser opportunities for dogs and wolves but there will still be dogs and wolves because you are still winning souls and you have to reach out to everybody without discrimination so there will still be dogs and wolves so it is, it is it is something that sh should come as no surprise you know and we should create a situation where the world will stop making a force and noise about hey there's a scandal in this church oh look at the kind of person that that um this person did this in this church be like yo so you mean to tell me that this kind of person was in the society and we brought them into the church and because of our teaching for so long the person did not practice this sin or did not do all this nonsense it is now that it's showing up and we are going to deal with it rather than excommunicate and kick out the person you know we have to understand the reformatory um, um, purpose of the church and function of the church you know in today's day and age so when people come we are built on making everybody better us ourselves you know the leaders of the groups we have to make ourselves better you know we are not perfect that we do not need improvements and the people who come we also have to you know work on them with the word of god because that's what the word of god does the word of god you know sharpens us it makes us better you know it takes away the bad things you know it chisels us into the shape and image that god wants us to be you know so it doesn't matter how great or perfect you think you are if you do not have christ you have not been shaped by god you don't even know what god wants you to be or to live there are a lot of truths about you know the, the deeper mysteries of christ you don't even know so how can your life conform to it you don't even know if your life conforms to it you don't even you're not even aware of those deeper mysteries so the more you learn the word of god the more you grow in the word of god then you are changed and you are transformed into the image of what god wants you to be so everybody's on that journey you know so we have to understand that and we have to be cautious and know that, yes it's a church but this is what we are going to encounter you know so don't be one of those who are always looking and saying ah this brother in church did this this sister in church did this all those people are supposed to be in church you yourself you don't know what you are doing that other people are talking about but the reality of the matter is that everybody you know is welcomed into a church therefore there are going to be all kinds of people in a church it's a, it's actually a shame that they are not even worse people in churches 
you know, the world should be ashamed of themselves that they do not have anything to reach out to all these kinds of people and to change them. Rather than criticize the church and say, ah, look at this kind of person in the church. Oh, this person did this in the church. What program does the world have to reach out to such people for free and change them? Because nobody is charged a fee to enter a church. It's so it's a free program to help people. You know, the world needs the church. More than the, ch more than the church needs the world. And that's a fact. You know, if you're a Christian, you're satisfied, you, you know, to go to heaven and, you know, you have your life with Christ. If you want to live an isolated life, you know, that is going to be unfortunate in the sense of if you do not win souls. That is unfortunate for very many reasons. But the reality of the matter is it's the world that needs the church more than the church needs the world. You know, so that being said, you know, don't let people gaslight you into uh, the idea of oh look at all these kind of people in the church they are supposed to be those kinds of people in the church and the church is supposed to have programs to help change and transform people the word of god itself should be doing that and it does that if the word of god is preached without censorship if the true authentic word of god is preached without the word of God being censored and without the pastor sticking to certain themes and ignoring certain things, if you preach the whole gospel, the, it, you are going to obviously touch on and do things and say things that will be transforming and changing people and speaking to people's hearts and the Spirit of God will be giving them conviction, you know, and people will be changed. So yes, there are supposed to be all kinds of people in the church and you that is going to church, you know, you must be aware of that, you know, so it should come as no surprise to anybody. People should be thankful to the church that we have a program. You know, we have a, a system on ground on earth to attract all kinds of people and to change them. Because there are a lot of people who are in church that came in with all kinds of problems and with all kinds of propensities. They would have been kidnappers. Some of them were androbers. Some of them would, were androbers in the making. You know, some of them were all kinds of things. Some of them were rapists in the making. They, they could have been rapists if they did not become a member of a church. What about those? You know, celebrate those and celebrate the whole system of what it's about. Changing people, bringing all kinds of people. Good people, bad people, people that you never hurt a fly. And then people who are looking for somebody to kill. Be grateful that there is a place where all these people can congregate and, you know, make their life better so that they will be more like Christ, more like God, more like the perfect image. Of perfection which is jesus you know so that's that thank you god bless you. remember to check out alfred.vip for more you know listen to this teaching so far and over again discuss them with you know your friends you know download them you know and you also tell people about jesus tell people your testimony you know don't just be somebody online who nobody knows you're a christian you know don't be somebody online you know you're happy to post about every other thing but to post about christianity and your faith and where you are with god you're sure about it and when you post and the opposition comes and people say all kinds of things no matter how wise or smart it sounds ignore them you know ignore what they say anything they try to do or say to discourage you about your christian faith ignore them you don't owe them an explanation they don't give you an explanation for the things they do. Why should you give them an explanation? Why do you need to be justified in their eye before you take the next step in Christianity? You know, why do you need, need to see that they agree with the next move you make in your Christian work? You know, if you believe, for example, if you want to give your tithes, you know, and you put that out there, you know, that you just give your tithes, you feel happy, you know, you feel great. And then some people in the world are tweeting you and are like, oh, look at this, you are, you are such a fool, you are, you are giving the, the pastor money to buy a new private jet, blah, 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 blah. That concerns them. Do they explain any, do they explain their motives to you? You know, you don't need their approval. You gave, you feel good about it, you are great about it, you know, you feel great about it. You see the good works that he's doing. You see the souls, you know, that is leading to the kingdom. You see the funds you are making available for the, for the kingdom advancements. You know, you are laying up treasures in heaven. So you do what you do, you know. 
let the world keep talking the world does not ask for your opinion before they do all the things they do to change the world the world economic forum does not ask of, of your opinion world bank does not ask of your opinion imf does not ask of your opinion they are just doing all that they want to do to control as much as they want blackrock does not ask of your opinion you know all the wars that have been fought around the world did, did the people where the people ask for their opinion do you want this war to be fought we are not asked so why do we now need to start giving people explanations for us doing the right thing we shouldn't so that's it thank you and god bless you